Hello everyone, welcome to another serious painting analysis by your local experts. Today we will be looking at a painting, uh, the title is number 30, also known as Autumn Rhythm. Uh, this was painted in 1950 by Jackson Pollock. The technique is enamel on canvas. So uh, let's look at the painting. What, what are the peculiar peculiarities of this painting? What is interesting about this one? So, well, it looks very random to me. It looks like a mess. Yeah, it does. It's just a bunch of paint splashed on, on, on canvas. Um, you know, even if I'm trying to guess that somebody was deliberately painting something like this, I think this was a spill, you know. Why do we have this pink patch here? You know, there are two pink blotches here and you can't find pink anywhere else. I don't know, I think you can find like little small blotches of pink okay, yeah, throughout here. the painting, but maybe he was going for like autumn colors, like leaves dying and stuff decaying. Really? I because know, I, I would maybe. never picture it with so many white and black. I have no idea, but that's just a, th a thought I had, because it's called Autumn Rhythm. Yes, it was painted in October of 1950. Uh, this was uh, almost right before he died and uh, the interesting thing about this painting is uh, the name number 30 uh, the number 30 doesn't imply anything uh, Jackson Pollock had a habit of naming his paintings just by a number so he wouldn't influence you with what the painting depicts and it's interesting that this one also had a title Autumn Rhythm uh, supposedly by him and uh, I guess he influenced you enough to think that this is connected to Autumn. Well, yeah, because of the title. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I don't know. Uh, I always associate Autumn with um, yellow and brown and maybe red, so I would never associate this picture with, this painting with uh, Autumn. Uh, my first thoughts, first thoughts are something, you know, like as if this canvas is like papyrus, mm -hmm. you know, the old type of uh, paper people like used. Like Egyptian scrolls. Exactly, yeah, and all of the black. Um, it reminds me of what we did in high school when we were supposed to draw, you know, we would use, we would draw with, uh, what was it, like charcoal and there was also the special ink we used and you were supposed to draw something like this and you would, then you would always get uh, this combination, uh, the beige and black on beige. Uh, and looking at this painting, you know, this dominates uh, alongside with some light blue here and then some other colors but yeah i would i have a hard time thinking what this depicts uh maybe if we rotate the picture we will get a better idea <laughs> you know <laughs> what in, what's interesting is only just now i noticed there's a signature here and mm -hmm. you can actually tell whether the picture is um rotated the wrong way around or not so that's a good indication of how to hang it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I rotate it. I don't see, I got to be honest, I don't see any difference. Like maybe I can guess if it's a cover up of something or maybe I can try to see something in it, but <laughs> I'm having a hard time. In any case, they, they say he painted this picture by dividing it into thirds and then he first worked on one third, then moved to another and so forth. Uh, that's he, interesting because it looks um pretty much done in one go yeah done in one go yeah he, like you know it looks to me like like one color was done in one go and then he he switched to another color i, I would think so too know. but if you look really really closely then you can see like uh black is on top on white or top on top of white here and here as well but at some other places, white is on top of black, so uh -huh, okay. uh, he definitely changed those brushes often as he splattered the color around. Uh, what's interesting is the size of this painting. It's uh, over five meters wide and two and a half meters tall, so um, he just ha had it on the ground, you know, the canvas laying on the ground, and as he splattered the color on top of it. Mm. Uh, that is also one of the reasons why you don't see, you know, dripping colors as they would if he were to hang it and then work on it. Um, okay, let's rate the painting. In terms of aesthetics, do you find this painting aesthetically pleasing? Mm, yes, I do. What would you give it out of 10? Um, I'd give it a seven. 
Okay, I gotta be honest, and I would give it a 2 out of 10 since I see this as a painting by a disturbed person. To okay. me, I, I, I judge it like a Rorschach uh, <laughs> picture, really. Okay. This, to me, tells a story of a man who is deeply disturbed. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he was. I, I don't know much about his life. Are there any studies about it? I'm not sure. Okay, we will check for the next J Jackson Pollock analysis. So, in terms of aesthetics, uh, we will have to agree on 5 out of 10 since I gave it a 2 and you gave it a 7. Okay. That's a 5. Okay, about the colors. Uh, colors used here, he actually uses nearly, I think, all the colors. I can't see any green here, but perhaps I just didn't look well enough. So, uh, we could guess he uses nearly all the colors, but the dominating colors are black, white, and light blue. Um, in terms of colors, I would give it 6 out of 10. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of on the cold side, but I don't know. It's a nice combination of colors, I think. I do agree. I, I like these colors. Um, okay, here's a category that's really interesting about Jackson Pollock's painting. So, difficulty to paint. Um, do you I think, think this one is difficult to paint? I don't think it's difficult to paint. I think it would be very difficult to reproduce. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So <laughs> there's probably zero chance of you recreating or copying this. Like, you, you know, there are a lot of Chinese artists and, you know, not, not maybe not Chinese, but uh, the Eastern parts where Eastern countries where artists recreate paintings for a fee and they do a hell of a good job. But Jackson Pollock's painting, I think it's impossible, absolutely impossible to recreate. I think they could do it. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's impossible, but when we rate these pictures by difficulty to paint, we don't, uh, we don't rate the recreation of the exact mm. thing. We, recreate, we rate the painting of and how difficult it is to paint something like this. I'd give it a three. You've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. I was expecting a one so that I could up it with a zero. Um, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm reserving the really low numbers for, you know, some other artists. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. That, that, that's a good approach. I agree. Uh, I suggest we settle on two out of ten okay. for the difficulty. Watchability factor. Can you watch this painting for a longer time? Definitely. You could lose yourself in this painting, become quite mad, or <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I find the solution to everything. Most likely, yeah. Like, check this out. He left some handprints here. I wow. only just noticed it. Yeah. So that's cool. Definitely, the watchability factor is a large one on mm. this one. You can really w look at this painting for a long while, and if, every time you will discover something else. Mm -hmm. Like. What the hell is this? Is this a, a small chili pepper here? What is this? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, so uh, watchability factor, I would give it an 8. Mm, yeah, I agree. Um, next up, living roomness factor. Would you put this painting in your living room? Mm, I think I would. It, um, I could use it like as a wallpaper, considering its size. My living room doesn't fit it, and I don't think yours either. <laughs> <laughs> so the living room is factor, yeah. Uh, I would love to have it in my living room, but there's no chance I could fit it. Um, well, yeah, we should give it like a high, high score. Seven. Okay. Moving on. Size-wise, this painting is one of the largest paintings since it's two and a half by five. And it on our matrix for size, it definitely goes uh, b above and beyond, which gives it a 10 out of 10. And finally, we have Price. Uh, this painting back in 1950s was sold for $20,000. Uh, right now, I can't find the price estimate for it, uh, but other Pollock's works have been sold for millions and millions of dollars. So uh, I'm guessing this one could probably be as well sold for such money since... It's supposed to be one of his most notable works. And one of the largest and also uh, one done prior to his death. So. Uh, I'm guessing it's uh, in the millions, so uh, we will have to give it a 9 out of 10 for the price. What do you think about this painting? Do you think, do you see anything else that we haven't seen? Let us know in the comments below. Uh, and until next time, we will see you in the next analysis by your local experts.